What's up? Roland here. This week on 3D Nerd Stop, I'm going to show you all how to print with two different colored filaments with only one extruder. Alright guys, here we go. Let's start this off. Uh, the first thing we need to do is I guess we need to build a clock face. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do a model here let's see here where am I let's start here let's use this model this is a scout clock face um, my sister actually wants me to make one of these for her so I'll make one up for her real quick so this is the clock face so the first thing we would do is download it okay and once we've downloaded that, then we're going to need the mechanical part of a clock. So we switch over here to Amazon, and this is the clock I purchased. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. The reason I picked this one is because it has a hanger at the top of it, as you can see. Um, plus it has white hands, and I'm going to do the face of this clock, uh, the numbers and everything in black for her. So we do that, and then we'll switch over here to Tinkercad. Now the reason I'm going to go over here to Tinkercad is because I'm going to modify this clock face in two different ways. One, it's the original model's too big for the build plate, so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And two, I want to put a background behind it because right now it's an open model. Um, so basically it's a see-through model and I want to put a background behind it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do in this print, we're going to do a two filament print, two different color filament print with one extruder. So we're going to see if we can get that to work too. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new design. Now I am not a Tinkercad expert, so y'all will have to bear with me. <laughs> I have played around with this a little bit, but not a whole lot. So we're going to start with a cylinder. I'll bring a cylinder out here. And then I want to drop a ruler out here so I can adjust my measurements as I see fit. So let's see here. I want to make this 210 by 210. So that gives me 210 by 210. And I only want the height to be 1.4. Okay, so it's 1.4 millimeters thick. Okay. So now that we've done that, we can get rid of our measuring tool. Zoom in here a little bit. Now what we want to do is do an import. We want to import a file. We want to choose our file. So we'll come in here and we will go to our models. So here's our scout clock. So we're actually going to import this file. We're going to say import. And voila, there it is. So now, like I said, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than our build plate. It's actually a really nice model when you look at it. It's beautiful. So what we're going to do with it is we are going to drop a ruler down on the table on it so we can adjust its size and we're going to come in here and say I want this to be 200 by 200 as you notice I made it just a little bit smaller than the background that'll leave a little bit of background on the, around the outside edge I just think it'll be aesthetically pleasing that way um, then what we want to do is we want to a line. Oops, hang on. I think we have to select both of these when we do that. So we select this one, and then we select this one, and then we can go align. And then we can say, I want it to align on that, and I want it to align on that. And there we can see, now we have it centered. Now, the other thing we might want to do here is this piece. As we can see over here, let's see if we can manipulate this just a little bit here. There we go, that's what I was looking for. There we go, click 
on that one. And there we go. So what I'm looking for, the height of it is at three millimeters, which is fine. I'm perfectly good with that being at three millimeters, which is the max height our clock should be set at. So leaving the face at three millimeters should be good. The other thing we need to do is we need to adjust the center hole here. So we'll grab another cylinder, bring it out here. And we'll turn it into a hole and then we'll grab a oh, we can modify these and I determined that eight millimeters would give us ju hopefully just enough tolerance that the face will slide on nice and easy and we can bolt it down and it'll be good so once we do that then we're going to want to select it and the clock face have them both and then we want to align them so we want to align here and here so now it should be centered looks pretty centered okay and then one thing we might want to do to this real quick Select this again. Oh, turn off our alignment. Select this again and just push it down. Oops, not what I meant. Control Z. Select this and just push it down a little bit so it goes all the way through the model. There we go. Now we've got it going all the way through. Now we can select everything and turn off our measurement tool. Now we can select everything and group it and voila there we go now we have a clock face that's one solid piece okay so now what we can do is we want to export this so download for 3d printing so an STL. There we go. We can see it downloaded it here. All right, guys. Now we're going to load up the model we just got done building. Here you go. This is the model. Um, well, we're going to do a little experimentation on this model. We're going to speed our print time up our print speed up just a little bit we're going to print up, up it to 70 instead of 60 which is what we normally do but we're going to leave everything else up the same now one other thing i did learn about cura just from messing around with it is when you set the base speed here unless you override it here it's going to use this speed so if you go under advanced, you can set all these to zero and then it will use this speed you put in here to do all of it. I do not recommend that you do your bottom layer that fast. I do recommend you do your first layer really slow because the first layer is the most critical. It's the one that has to be almost perfect. So I still do my bottom layer at 30 millimeters a second. So that being said, we have our model loaded up here. Now we're going to do this with two filaments. We're going to do a white and then we're going to do a white for the background and then we're going to do a black for everything on the face. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins. Now it, they have this plugin here, which is pause at height. Okay you can try this one um, if you have an LCD screen that you're using to print with it might work wonderful for you I don't have an LCD screen on mine I did try it and if you want me to I can show you a real quick clip of it in fact here it is so when it went to print this is what it did is it paused and it actually went to where I told it to it went to zero zero which is what I set mine to but it went over there stopped and then went right back to printing it didn't actually pause and let me do anything and then when I tried it in matter control, it actually paused, but there wasn't any way to tell it to resume printing. 
or at least not that I'm aware of, there wasn't any way to resume printing. So I did find this module, this add-on or plug-in, which what it does is it will pause for a designated amount of time. So what I did is I set mine to 120 seconds. That gives me two minutes to change the filament out and purge the head, which you do manually. Um, and sadly enough, the footage of me actually doing that to mine did not come out, so I won't have it for you, but it's not that difficult to do. You just change your filament out. Um, but to set this up, I set it up to where it would pause at 1.4. Okay, so it'll actually print the 1.4 layer, and I'll show you how I came up with the 1.4. I do want the head position to go to 0, 0. It doesn't need to raise the nozzle up any, and it retracts about 5 millimeters. So that's fine. So if you come over here, and you go to layers and let it generate, let's take this all the way down to 1. Okay, so we have layer 1, which is 0.2 of a millimeter. So if we go 1, layer 2, which is now 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.4. Okay, as you can see, 1.4, it's still printing the background. But at 1.6, it's not. Now, I know I can tell it's not. Hopefully, you all can too. You just have to kind of look at it and judge it. I can tell by the way all these lines are that it's not printing in here anymore. It's now only printing around the perimeter. So that tells me at 1.4 I want to stop. So I put it at 1.4 and it stopped after it printed this layer before it printed this layer. So that's what I did. Is I have that pause in there so I can change the filament out. So that's how you print with two different colors or three different colors or four different colors with one extruder now that being said I have not tried to add this module more than once or this plug-in more than once um, and I have not and you can only do it on the z-axis you can't tell it to print this side white and this side black it won't do that you can only stop it on the z-axis so I guess if you wanted to print half of it white and half of it black you'd have to rotate it up on its edge which probably wouldn't print all that well but at least you can do it with two colors on the z-axis so uh, to go over our base settings you know we're doing a 0.2 layer height we're doing a 1.2 shell thickness on top and bottom we're also doing the, the sides at 1.2 um, we are going to do our print speed at 7, 70 millimeters a second which is uh, 10 millimeters faster than usual and we are going to do our temp at 210, our bed at 50. We don't need any support material. Um, everything else is the same. So that's the only thing we really did was add this plug in to take, tell it to pause. So let's get the printer heated up and get it printing. One more side note that I did print this from using the USB cable I did not do it with the SD card so when I came in here and printed this up if y'all get this dialog box yeah it's it works it lets you click print and it tells you what your bed temperature is but that's all it does I did discover that if you go under file preferences and under print window you can go to um, performance UI and go OK and then if you close it and then reopen Cura and then reload your model real quick okay now if I go to print as you can see I get a much fancier interface it allows me to come in here and type the bed temperature and uh, the, I'm sorry the extruder temperature and the bed temperature and it'll go ahead and preheat them for me before I tell it to print you can also mess with your Y and Z axis uh, you can also um, move your head move the head up and down you can also you know tell it to extrude so you can purge the nozzle before you get started so I did find this and I thought I'd share that with everybody so you can see 
you know, plus I believe it allows you to type commands in here. I'm not sure. I have not tried that. I don't know what would happen if you did. <laughs> but maybe I'll do a video after I figure all this out and show y'all what I found out about it. I just thought I'd share that with y'all. So, let's get the printer heated up and get her printing. Alright guys, you can see our print's done, and here she is. She looks fabulous. As you can see on the back, you can see that I added my logo to the print. Kind of hard to see there. But there we go. That's the print. Now I know in my video showing you how I put this together, I didn't have my logo in it. I did go back and add that to it. Um, but I did that afterwards, and I'm just running out of time to get this video done before I move. So, there is the clock face. Now, here's the clock mechanism we're going to use. 
Um, I bought this on Amazon, and I'll send you, I'll have a link to this in the description for this. But basically, you take this, and it has a little rubber washer there you put on it, and you put the clock face on it. And I'll line up mid at noon with the point up there. And then put this little washer on it. Supposedly, and then you put this little bolt on it, put the little nut on it here. Let's see if that will start. Let's see if we have enough room to do all that. All right, maybe not with that washer on there. Let's try it without the washer. There we go. That let it catch. So that should let it hang. And get that nice and finger tight there. So there we go. Now we got that on there. Now we put the minute hand on. And you just go ahead and point it at 12. Oops. Don't want to bend it. Somehow, it is supposed to go on here. Did not say it would be easy to get on here. There we go. Now we have the minute hand on. Point it up at 12. And we have the hour hand, which goes on here. We got that to go on. There's the hour hand. And then the second hand goes in there, like so. And voila, so we have it put together. Oops, I'm sorry, guys. Now you can see, I can set the time on it if I wanted to. And you can see it's rather easy to read. Um, I do have to get some batteries for it, and since I'm all packed up, all my batteries right now are all packed up. <laughs> so, I'll have to get some batteries in it for my sister here in a little bit. But get it to her, but there we go. We have made ourselves a clock. Thank you all for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day. All right, guys. Uh, here's a quick update on the move. Um, this is my pod being picked up from my house. My entire household is in it, except for what little bit I had to bring to my temporary living arrangements. So I am out of the old house, uh, living with family right now until my new house is ready. Uh, hopefully that won't be too terribly long. Uh, it's going to be about four months, hopefully. Um, I'll keep you all updated on the new house as we go through the weeks. Uh, show y'all pictures and stuff as it's being built. So here's the pod being picked up, and we'll see y'all next week.